Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Errol Kun, Watermaster, where we just came through the winning side of a siege. And yes, I do count that as a win, too. We didn't die. You remember how close we got? Was a bit harrowing there for a bit. And you know what? We're, and we're still not in the clear quite yet, either. Okay, so just a quick reminder. We did have a siege show up, a goblin siege with a bunch of trolls. Damn it. Actually, I just remembered. The trolls are still here down here in our ranger's guild, just kind of hanging out, destroying stuff. The scaly owl is theirs now. And on top of that, they also destroyed our uh, our whole pump stack over here, all the windmills, all that stuff. Damn shame, but we can get that rebuilt. The thing now is that we're gonna have to get rid of these trolls down here if we're gonna get back to work. It's dangerous, that's a lot of trolls. That's uh, 15 trolls actually, all clustered up in there. Don't mind the, uh, the ghosts and the one berserk dwarf. Yeah, that was a dwarf who, uh, he's not a happy camper over here in our stone stockpile. We got him locked in, though. We're just waiting for him to die. You trying to create an artifact during that siege, and we couldn't let him out and get what he needs, so... Yeah, he's a goner. Oh, man, things are moving right along here. We have elves. Elves just showed up over here, over in the east, but they don't have any place to unload their goods. Our trade depot was destroyed. So, you guys are just gonna have to wait out there for a little bit. Oh, and that's good. It looks like our cabbies have begun starving. Excellent. But not actually really, though. All right, I have paused the game for now. Um, but yeah, our cabbies, we do have a muddy room in here, so grass will begin growing, or not grass, but like moss and fungus and stuff. But that's an awful lot of cabbies, and it takes a while for that stuff to grow, so... <laughs> not, not really feeling too good about these poor guys. A lot of them are probably gonna die in some fairly short order, but... Anyways, just gotta think here, um... We need to get back outside, but those trolls are gonna be a serious problem. And they aren't looking to be going anywhere. And it does look like some of them are still in this pump stack area too, just kind of hanging out. I'm not too sure what they're doing. I wish they'd just leave. So at this point, the only thing I can think to do is to make a military squad and try destroying them real quick. We have to get back to work so that we can have a trap ready for the next time the goblins show up. So we can avoid being in this sort of situation again. So the quicker we can deal with these trolls, the better. <sighs> Okay, having a look over here, in our dirty old fortress, I just noticed this dead dwarf. Which is strange, because there hasn't been anything going on in here. Looked into it, and sure enough, it looks like that dwarf was found dead, completely drained of blood. Which means that, yes, we do have a vampire in the fortress. Throw it on the pile, something else we'll have to deal with in short order. Okay, here we go. Game is still paused, and we're just gonna go step by step. First step, vampires. Okay, I'm gonna go through and we're going to delete all of these beds in here. All these tiny, dirty bedrooms, getting rid of them all. As well as these beds here down in the fortress. No more bedrooms. And instead, for now, we're gonna set up a bunch of beds here in our temple. Next to all these sarcophagi, which seems kind of messed up. But when that vampire pops up again, if everyone's sleeping in this one room, then somebody is sure to spot them. This is a surefire way to deal with a vampire. A pain in the ass way, but it's gonna get done. Oh boy, more and more cabbies dying. Okay, we'll take care of them next. Well, actually, that's a pretty uh, simple solution. We can take all the cabbies and bring them up to this dirty area. I forgot that because it's dirt, we already had moss growing in here. So this should work out pretty well, actually. We'll just bring them up here, let them graze around on this moss for a bit. And then hopefully at some point, we'll have a bunch of moss down below as well. And when that happens, we can bring them back down. Easy enough. Cavies vampire, all set on both, hopefully. Oof, but a lot of cabbies did die. Damn shame, condolences, my friends. Now we have the issue of the trolls, which I'm a little shaky about, but... Well, trolls are big. They're big creatures. Bigger than a human. And they have big old horns that could easily kill a dwarf. Now, I know I said there was 15 in this room, but there's not. I think there's 11, which is still a, you know, pretty decent number. But I am also thinking that if we get a, a large number of dwarves to go in there and just kind of go to town with their fists, then maybe we could do it. We do have 107 dwarves right now. That's not too bad, it's not too bad. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to have a stab at that. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Alright, that's gonna do it right there. 80 dwarves in our army. All peasants, nobody knows how to fight. This is gonna be a mess. I'm just gonna come up here, take this wall down out of the dirty fortress, and uh, then we'll group up outside and hope for the best. Come on, dwarves, let's do it. You know, I'm seeing some warrior dwarves in here, actually. I don't think they have any weapons or anything, but maybe a couple of them do. That'd be handy. Okay, so there we go. There's our army. Pretty formidable. And I think we'll start out by cleaning out this scaly owl down here. Let's do it, dwarves. Here they come. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Hope for the best. Here we go. Okay, we have that teal troll blood now. Excellent. Get in there, dwarves. Show them what water master dwarves are made of. Some of the trolls are panicking now. Actually, that's pretty excellent. I don't think we've lost anyone. It looks like the trolls are hurting now. We did lose one dwarf there. More dwarves. Pile on. Let's go. 
it's hard for them to kill the trolls. They can knock them unconscious easy enough, but then it's a matter of beating them to death when they're on the ground, and that does take some doing. Brutal stuff. But, yeah, we're doing it. We are doing it. Only a couple trolls left in there. But yes, there we go. Cleaned out totally. Looks like we lost one dwarf in the mess. But, you know, gonna have to say it was an acceptable loss. Now, it's looking like some of these trolls from the pump stack are coming down. Just of their own accord, apparently. Killed that one, no problem. And from the looks of it, we only have one left. Get in there, dwarves. <laughs> yes, there we go. Thing is just panicking, running around this field here. And is dead. Wonderful. Good job, dwarves. We are free and clear once more. Now we can turn the burrow off and get back to work. What? All right, I'm uh, down here in our temple. We just had another dead dwarf found completely drained of blood. And they're like right in the middle of this area here. Did nobody see anything? Somebody must have saw something, right? Oh, actually, it looks like we do have someone who was accused. Asmel, our manager. That makes sense too. Okay, yeah, uh, here we are. Asmel, our manager chosen for the position because he has some pretty decent social skills, meaning that he's most likely had a whole bunch of time to work on those skills, like an unnaturally long time to work on those skills. And on top of that, he has white hair, as if he's very, very old. Yeah, this is our vampire, for sure. As such, we have some things to prepare for them. Not gonna expel this one. No, no, we're gonna keep them somewhere nice and safe, somewhere from which they'll never escape. Ooh, actually, you know what? Better idea. I was going to make a little cell for them here, but that doesn't involve enough suffering, I don't think. <laughs> so, well, one thing we were working on before that whole siege mess was you can see these grates in the floor right here. And currently, these link up to the old dirty fortress up top. But this was intended to be a mist generator, which is actually kind of functioning now because there's an aquifer above us. So water is kind of falling down from the ceiling right now. We still have to refine it a bit. But I was thinking that, well, since we're going to have water flowing down through those grates, what more torturous existence could there be than being completely, eternally submerged underwater, you know? And so yes, if we look down below these grates right here, you can see these outlet tunnels. These lead out into the caves. And over here, we dug out a staircase going down to this cell. And so now we should see our captain of the guard go over and grab that damn vampire and drag them down to that chamber. There we go, yes. We'll show you to your room. And wonderful, locked in. And now we'll just throw a grate down over that staircase, just like that. And now that vampire can never come out. And once we get water flowing down over that grate, that chamber will be filled up with water. Torturous existence achieved. I'll keep you updated. Now then, back outside here at Old Watermaster. And we have been continuing work on the reservoir wall, of course. And as you can see, it's about one, two, three, four. There's a few bits here that aren't completed yet. Five is done for the most part. Six starts to get shaky. Seven's about halfway done and eight is pretty much untouched. But up here, you can see we have a new way of going about building this wall, a way that I wish we had discovered uh, when we started this, because it would have made things much easier, I think. Now, if you have a look over here, well, I had mentioned before that I did not want to build scaffolding, but here we are, scaffolding. It was brought to my attention that instead of building floors, which I would typically do for scaffolding, you could build a bridge, which makes it a lot easier, because a bridge is just one big section, and when you want to take it down, it's as easy as taking the entire bridge down instead of every little piece by itself. So this should go much faster. Now that we've built these bridges along the outside of our wall, we can pretty safely just go and build large sections of dolomite wall just like this. Man, this can make things go so much faster. Remember that, bridges. I'm definitely going to forget that. But yeah, now that we have this figured out, things should go much quicker, I'm hoping. Oh yeah, would you look at that? Man, I really wish we figured this out sooner. Oh, but that's dumb. <laughs> Boy, I had a little bit of an accident there. Okay, so be careful, because if they're constructing a wall that's not attached to other pieces of wall and just bridge, then the bridge can't support it. It's kind of hard to explain. Just, uh, bridges can make things go fast, but they're also kind of dangerous. You'll figure it out, I'm sure. Huh, what the hell? Okay, I've paused the game. Up here in this bedroom, well, you can't really see them, but there's a dead child in this bed, and they've been found completely drained of blood. <laughs> there's a couple things to note here. They were found in the bed before. They weren't found by the person that's currently occupying the bed with a dead child. I don't know why this child was in here. It doesn't appear to be their bedroom. This isn't their family member, but whoever it is decided to just hop in bed next to the corpse. A little messed up. From the looks of this person, I don't think they're the vampire. We've had a couple of migrant waves at this point, and so it could be anyone, really. <sighs> that being said, looks like we have to get our vampire dormitory set up again. What a pain. Nobody's gonna like that. I've locked most of the bedrooms now, so it should just be a matter of waiting once again. And let's see, while we're down here in the fortress, what else can I show you? 
our main focus has been that reservoir up top, but we have done a few things down here. Well, okay, here's something. If you have a look over here, we have two small tombs built. And these were constructed specifically for the fortress's pets. Cavies, mostly, I would assume. A lot of them are going to be taken as pets, and a lot of them are going to die, too, as we've seen. So I figured we'll get a couple tombs set up especially for them. Maybe throw some nice statues in there at some point. And actually, right next to that, we have this tiny little shrine. There's a statue of some terrified trolls, surrounded by several bauxite statues of dwarves striking menacing poses. Just a place of remembrance for our first siege. Peasants versus trolls, and Watermaster came out on top. A historic event right there. Oh boy. Well, we were doing good. But it looks like up on the surface, a were lizard has just popped up. Which is going to be a problem. The were lizard representative, Kivish Lalternil, has come. A large humanoid lizard crazed for blood and flesh, its eyes glow violet, and its dark brown scales are blocky and set far apart. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Man, we were right on track too. I think the next goblin siege is going to be right around the corner. Ugh. I don't want to have to lock ourselves up inside, but I also don't really want a were lizard infestation either. And so, I'm going to turn on a burrow real quick. And what we're going to do is hope for the very best. Oh, okay. Where lizard is killing somebody. Somebody has died. That's fine. A little decoy. This won't take too long. They're only going to stay aware lizard for a night. So as long as we can just uh, hold out until then, please don't come down in the fortress. It's coming down into the fortress. Attacking another dwarf. All right. Someone just got the hell beaten out of him. But the lizard did turn back into a dwarf who I'm pretty sure is just part of our civilization. I wish they would just leave. Why don't you leave? Okay, I think they're they're off now. Get the hell out of here. All things considered, that could have been much, much worse. But it looks like we came on top once again. Good job, Watermaster. Anywho, we've let some time pass. And looking back topside, you can see the reservoir here is just about done. Still getting rid of some scaffolding and putting some additional touches on there. But yeah, we're just about there. Exciting stuff. Big time. Having a look back over here at the pump stack, you can see it is rolling once more. We got that all set again. And we also put some walls around it this time. It's accessible from inside our fortress. Completely safe. Going around outside the reservoir now, getting rid of some of these staircases. Don't need them anymore. Getting some of these supplies put away in the fortress. Oh, oh, damn it. That sneaky vampire. Another dwarf was just found dead, but it wasn't one of the bedrooms that we haven't locked. There were only a couple of them. What are the chances? This vampire is a sneak. Well, not much we could do at this point. Damn it. Just uh, keep those eyes open, dwarves. But yes, I suppose we can start getting this reservoir filled up, eh? Just gotta make sure we've plugged up all the holes, don't want the fortress getting flooded. But I think we're good at this point. Cross your fingers, dwarves. Just gotta come down here and pull some levers real quick. Okay, here comes the water, heading down towards the pump stack once more. It reaches the top and begins to flow down the hillside. And as such, our reservoir will soon start filling. Yeah, here it comes. This is gonna be one heck of a slow process, that's for sure. But we do have time. At least we can be locked up safely away from the goblins now if they do arrive. Our reservoir is going to fill up eventually. Just don't know how long it'll take. Now then, while it's filling up, we're back down here in Old Watermaster. Just to point out a few things. Like, well, if you look over here, that muddy cavy chamber. Remember that? We have put the cavies in here once again, as well as a bunch of wood. And that's because we've completely carved away that old dirty fortress. It's not there anymore. And so those cavies couldn't be there anymore. But that's fine because there's moss and stuff in that muddy chamber now. And we put that wood in there because we figured we have to collect a bunch of wood from this reservoir floor just before it gets covered up with water. No sense in wasting that wood, right? Now, this here is only going to be a temporary arrangement because, as you can see down below here, we do have another room set up for cavies. But it's not muddy quite yet. But that's fine because we have something in place. You'll notice this pipeline here leading down to the south. This is connected up to the reservoir. And you can see it's being blocked up by a floodgate right now. And that's so, well, you can see this pipe right here, like a chimney sticking up out of the ground. And if we go up, it's just this tall. It reaches to the top of the reservoir, eight Z levels. And at this level, there are some fortifications in the side so that when the water gets this high, it'll fall down through those fortifications and it will go down to here, where it's going to flow northward, up to this junction, where it can go left into this reservoir down here, which is going to feed our wells. It can go up to the north and fill up that pen, get that nice and muddy for the cavities, or it can go down over here and through this tunnel to some farm plots. Those have to be muddied up too. And because we have a system like this in place, it should be very, very easy to do. Just takes a little bit of thinking beforehand to get everything set up. We got farms, we got a pasture, we got a well, all set. I will note too that this well, it is attached up here in our meeting hall. We have four wells in here taking from that reservoir. And if we go up, 
We do have a well up here, as well as here, as well as here, in a hospital. Wells can lower their bucket through each other, and so the hospital here at the top level can just feed its bucket down through those other three wells into that reservoir. Not a problem at all. But we have a... Well, we look to have hit a bit of a snag. The reservoir is filling, but when the water gets to this brook, it just kind of flows down into it and then out of the reservoir, which, I mean, makes sense in a way, but water tends to be a bit strange sometimes in Dwarf Fortress, especially brooks. No matter. Doesn't matter. We are getting it blocked up. We're just getting it covered with wood. A simple fix. Two shakes. We'll be right back to it. Oh boy. Here we go. A vile force of darkness has arrived once again. Now, I'm going to note that some time has passed, and we did get that brook blocked up, so the reservoir is filling again. Oh, you're in for it now, you bastards. Watermaster is in full swing now. The bridges are ready. The traps prepared. And from the looks of it, too, you're working with a little bit of a different situation here. Wowie, oh yeah. We got some trolls, we got some beak dogs. Bunch of goblins riding on beak dogs. That does not bode well, but as I said... Watermaster is back up on its feet and we are ready to go. Okay, you dwarves, come on, hurry up now. Get back to the fortress. The enemy is incoming. It's gonna be a close call for some of you, I think. Do not tarry, dwarves. Oh man, looking down here again? That's a, that's a lot of trolls they brought. They're still coming in. Pretty insane. Whoa. Yeah, would you look at that? All kinds of trolls. Damn. Wow, yeah, these goblins are serious. Full force. Should note, too, that uh, it looks like they've brought some dwarves with them this time. A new addition to their forces. Not a surprising one, though. Remember those Snatchers that showed up before? Tried to steal away that baby? Uh, Snatchy, actually. Cabby's boy. Well, if he would have been snatched, this is what happens to those dwarves. They take dwarven children and they train them up as soldiers in their foul armies. Kind of messed up, really. But that's how it comes to pass. I saw an elf in there, too. Another stolen child, I'm sure. Damn shame. Just not right. Well, the time has come to fight back, my dwarves. Looking back over towards the bridge, looks like a group of trolls is leading the army. Trying to get first blood, I guess. Not too surprising. Now, I'm gonna try something that probably isn't the best idea. But it's worked out for us in the past. You might be able to guess what we're doing here already, actually. You may notice our soldiers kind of gathering in the cavy chamber. I'm gonna try to meet those trolls head on cut them down before they can get into the fortress. Right now, they're filing in in a pretty much a straight line. So, uh, maybe, maybe. We were able to beat down a fair number of them before, and that wasn't a big group, too. Just gonna have to keep eyes up on this bridge while we're doing it. Just so we can pull that lever right when the goblins are trying to pass over. If they get in, we're screwed. Okay, my dwarves, here we go. The trolls are incoming. Let's do this. Okay, the warriors are moving eastward through the doors, out of the cavy chamber. The warriors. <laughs> that's, that's fun of me. The peasants. There are about 110 dwarves here now. Some of them do have combat skills too, so I'm feeling pretty positive about it. The one bad thing that could come out of this though, I think, is that, well, our army might split up and go both north and south. We don't want that. We want them to stay grouped up, as much as possible anyways. I am seeing some wounded dwarves. But we do have some dead trolls too, so that is just excellent. Yeah, here they go. They are moving up to the north now. Trolls are pretty good because after you kill them, the other trolls become horribly demoralized, like immediately. Start panicking. Dumb animals. Back up here on the surface. Looks like we're ready to roll. The goblins have moved over the bridge. And so we'll get this lever pulled. Just like that, thank you. And... Gagoosh. <laughs> Idiots. That's what you get. Okay, admittedly, it wasn't the best trap because, well, we don't have enough water in here yet, so it just kind of amounts to the goblins getting a little muddy, I suppose. <laughs> but you kind of get the idea. Imagine if this entire reservoir was filled up with multiple levels of water. It would all just kind of rush in, drown them. No problem at all. Just going to take some time. And you know what? It is looking like we're going to have to have another episode of Old Water Master here just to make sure we can get this thing in full swing. Oh, and you know what? I'm curious about these guys here. What happens if we pull that lever again while they're standing here? I think the bridge will just pop up underneath them. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it sent them flying, I guess. Kind of threw them up in the air for a second, and now they're all uh, just kind of bewildered. Bunch of morons. Yeah, we'll get this thing rolling next time. And so, that being the case, I think now it's time to talk about some behind-the-scenes things, observations, tips and tricks, that sort of stuff, while we enjoy some fortress scenes. And fan art, actually. We did have a few pieces come in observations. Well, first off, that vampire that popped up. Normally, I do all the recording for these things before I do any of the drawing. 
So it's kind of hard for me to reference things that I'm drawing in the actual recording, you know? I have to know what I'm going to draw first. That's not the case this time. This time I'm recording this after I've drawn the vampire. And upon re-inspecting the vampire, I noticed they don't have a beard. I noticed the white hair straight off the bat. Usually a dead giveaway there. But yeah, the whole beardless thing's pretty interesting too. I'm, you know, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that happens if a dwarf is raised with humans or in a human civilization. They'll just kind of grow up without a beard, which I think is pretty damn neat, actually. Another thing I should probably know is that I know that cabbies are guinea pigs, okay? <laughs> I know that's exactly what they are. I know they don't have big flappy noses in real life. Got a lot of comments about that last time. Just a little artistic liberty right there. I figured, what the hell, why not, you know? Wouldn't it be fun just to make the animals based on their dwarf fortress descriptions? Like a cabbie's description is a small rodent with no tail. It can be found roaming the grasslands in herds. It has three toes on its hind feet. Beyond that, I figure it's up to interpretation, you know? Your mind can go wild with such a bare description, and I love that. Why not have fun with it? Yeah, once again, using this toned down schedule, it results in a shorter video, but I'm able to put more editing into it, which I really do enjoy. Like a nice polished product, plus the drawings. I've been able to put more detail in each one, more thought, and I really like doing that too. My normal drawings are fine, but they're so rushed. These ones here I can be proud of, and I think that's really great. Anyways, I'm really excited to see how Watermaster runs when that trap up top is all the way filled up. And you know what, actually, something else I'm really excited about is seeing this stress system in full swing. We kind of pushed it there with those trolls. There were a whole bunch of bodies around. I haven't really fought things in this new update, but if we can go out there and fight like that, and the dwarves don't completely freak out and implode, then that'd be excellent. But, I mean, I guess keep in mind that that could happen too. Boy, that would suck if it happened during next episode, huh? Before I got to try out that reservoir trap. Eh, don't worry about it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyways, you bearded bastards, I appreciate you watching. I I appreciate it a lot more than you know, actually. I know I say it a lot, but I do mean it. Thank you so much. And you know what? I really hope to see you next time, too. Here in Erel Cun, Watermaster. And until then, you bearded bastards. <laughs>